those of that are here as well as those that are uh, online we welcome you we're glad you're here um, in case you can't tell I'm not Pastor O who is still <laughs> traveling and uh, we'll be back next week so uh, please remember him uh, and all that are with him uh, for traveling mercies um, bring your attention to a few announcements um, the biggest one is okay our vision cards um, I know everybody's turned them in right part of you have turned them in okay no I haven't turned mine in either so I'm sorry um, please get them in it will give us direction um, uh, of where Trinity is to go, be in prayer for that. Um, Debbie and I were in a meeting yesterday where, you know, churches with a vision. Do we have a vision? And that we need to come together. So um, please turn those in. You have the three questions. I've been pondering them. Finally got something written down a little bit. Okay, also, um, we're going to have Fall Bazaar. There's information um, in the bulletin, uh, but also there's QR code. So those of you who are tech savvy, and I think that's most of the congregation here as I look out. So um, anyway, next week, don't come at 11 o'clock. You will be meeting us leaving because we are going to have one service we will have Sunday school at 9 a.m. and we will have 10 a.m. Holy Communion. So please remember that. Um, and then anything else is in, the, in there? Anything else from the body of Christ? <coughs> Let us center our hearts and our minds during the prelude. <laughs> If you would, please join us as we have our call to worship. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Through the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. God makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. God breaks the bow and shatters the spear. God, God says, be still and know that I am God. God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. God of Jacob is our mighty. Join us in our hymn uh, 110. A mighty fortress is our God.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, many of us have had weeks that are crazy. We've got a lot on our minds. We ask to lay down those burdens at the foot of the cross that we can truly worship you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I let the world crash in on me and then I'm focused on that instead of you. Thank you so much that we can come in here as a community and in communion worship you. We need the mind of Christ to think the thoughts of God. Be with us as next hour as we literally worship you and hear your word and take it into our heart. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Sorry. The affirmation of faith. That's on 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. Ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Roman Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. join us as we pass the peace of Christ to one another.
There seems to be no reason for the suffering we feel. We are tempted to believe God does not know. When the storm Today's scripture reading comes from Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, friends. That was not very enthusiastic. Seriously, that's the best you can do? 
Good morning. There, now we're talking. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Hey, I'm really glad that you guys are back there. And, and ladies, too, just to say. Um, long before Glee was a TV show sometime in the whatevers, I was actually a member of a Glee club at Randolph-Macon. This was back in the day when you had Saturday classes and women came for the weekend because it was all men. My senior year was when Randolph-Macon went co-ed. And about 15 minutes into my senior year, I thought, well, I was really stupid. <laughs> but there's nothing like hearing a bunch of guys sing together. It's really a gift, so thank you for sharing that gift. So one of my first classes at Randolph-Macon in the long ago, land far, far away of Ashland, Virginia, I took English 8 o'clock in the morning. In fact, my freshman year, I had 8 o'clock classes Monday through Saturday. Wow, that was fun. English followed by calculus. Hmm, that'll increase your prayer life, I'll tell you that. So in this English class, the first novel I read in that course opened with two very memorable sentences. My mother died today, or maybe it was yesterday, I don't know. Those two sentences are from Albert Camus' The Stranger. And there are other great opening lines in great literature. Happy families are all alike. Every unhappy family is unho unhappy in their own way. That's from Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. And then, it was the worst of times. It was the best of times. Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities. And you know you're about to enter into a really weird and strange world when you read in George Orwell's 1984, it was a bright, cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13. Alice Walker starts the color purple with, you better not never tell nobody but God. And then one of the truest and briefest of all in Scott Peck's book, The Road Less Traveled. Life is difficult. Well, no kidding. Duh. In our brief span, no matter how old we are or how young we are, we know disappointments or failure or betrayal or heartbreak. We experience things beyond our control or beyond our fixing or beyond tolerable pain. Suffering can bring us down mind, body, soul, spirit, D, all of the above. Grief is the price we pay for love. And grief is hard. We know that in our very bones. To live without knowing such things is not to live at all. And if we don't have wounds to show for living our days, then, then, then our skin is as thick as a dinosaur's. And it didn't end well for them. Life is difficult. I love the fact that you have a, a men's group, there's a praise band, and, and as I asked at the 9 o'clock service, I didn't see it in the calendar, but when is the lament band practice? And the reason I ask that is because in the Bible there are twice as many psalms of lament as there are psalms of praise. Now, maybe the choir director or the band leader is lamenting when somebody hits a flat note. I don't know that that's ever happened in anybody else's life besides mine. But, but music really can express our size too deep for words. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus when Israel was in Egypt land oppressed so hard it could not stand, let my people go. Life is difficult. St. Paul knew that 
In a letter to the Corinthians, he confesses both life's hardships and God's help. He writes, we have this treasure in common clay jars to show that the all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Knocked down, but not knocked out. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Some of Paul's greatest words come from prison, like the scripture we just heard earlier this morning. But in another letter, Paul writes, I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Life is difficult. So difficult it can feel overwhelming and be knee-buckling, so we end up exactly where we need to be. We do what, guys? Thank you. Checks in the mail. We bow the knee. We end up exactly where we need to be, on our knees, humbled, broken, honestly admitting our need for something or someone greater or stronger than we. And surprisingly, surprisingly, that is exactly the place where we begin to stand tall and grow stronger. Paul rejoices that something good happens when plugged into that power source. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. That power is unlimited. There's no shortage. There's there's enough to go around. It's not like toilet paper during COVID. There's plenty of it. And it's free. Costly, but free. When life seems too much, In today's scripture, we're encouraged to be be touched by the Holy One so that divine energy flows and empowers us as well. Be strong in the Lord and in God's mighty strength. Be strong in the Lord. An ancient prophet confirmed long ago, this is the word of the Lord, so pay attention, friends. This strength, this power can sustain us, transform us, brighten and make us to shine like the sun in a dark and difficult world because God says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. I love how scripture particularly in our lesson today, doesn't pull any punches. There's there's nothing that is a part of your life, there is nothing that is a part of my life that is beyond the word of Scripture. There is a place for all of us, even on our best days, on our worst days, we can read Scripture and say, oh, this isn't just about them, this is about me. This is about us. Scripture gives voice to what I cannot speak myself. And we might be able to hold our own if we're only up against somebody our own size. But that's not the case, truth be told. There is cosmic sides resistance to goodness and mercy, to kindness and grace, to justice and peace. We know what it feels like to be outmatched, outmaneuvered, overwhelmed, encircled by systemic forces greater than our own. And Ephesians knows that as well. So the writer says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. So true. So true. Sometimes, don't you want to just throw your hands up, give up, 
because you don't even know which way to turn, where to start, how to get a grip on the powers and forces that seem to run the world and speak with such authority. You know, they say, that's just the way the world is, honey. Always has been, always will be. They announce boldly, the poor are always going to be with you. War is inevitable. Hunger and greed and fear and division and every ism you can imagine, they're just here to stay. So deal with it. And they feel too great, too strong. Because after all, I'm only human. Yes, I am human. And so are you, and there's something precious and beautiful about being human. In fact, God thinks that you being human is so important, and me being human, that God decided to come and live among us. Pitch God's tent in our midst, because there's something tragic and beautiful about us. And God wanted to experience that firsthand, and comes to us in Christ. You see, we're not only human. We are made in the image of God, beautiful, precious, beloved, made after God's likeness, the power of God living in us, believe it or not, the light of God shining through us, and God will not leave us to fight our battles alone or to fend for ourselves. At times, it is appropriate to, but God will not leave us there. God will not leave us there. Now, I love the fact that, that, that Dave, the drug dealer, I mean the pharmacist, <laughs> sorry, oh, did I really say that? Yeah, first time you furnished a day, though, right? <laughs> yeah, so I'm figuring this is going to be my last time here, so I might as well just go full bar. So there's a Dave and a David, and it's a great thing to be named David because you know the story in the, in the, in the Bible about a punk named David, little kid, comes up against a nine-foot-tall guy who could have played for any NBA team you want, or, or could really have given Caitlin a run for her money too. You know, I'm just saying that. Maybe. Thank you. That's exactly right. It would have been a heck of a contest. But David, little punk David, decides to do battle with this giant Goliath. And, and what's he have? He's got a sling and five smooth stones. And King Saul who knows everything because, after all, he is the king, says, you know, that's just not going to do. We're going to have to dress you up, boy. And so he gives him a helmet and a breastplate and a shield and a big sword. And all this stuff is so big that David just falls over because it doesn't fit. It doesn't work for him. So David goes forward, lean, stripped down, and triumphed over something greater than he. Now, Dave and I are lucky to be called Davids. But not everybody's a David, thank goodness. And we're certainly not biblical Davids. So that when we're facing giants greater than ourselves, we need all the help we can get. So God equips us not with Saul's armor that doesn't fit, but with God's armor that is always the right size for us. God gives us what we cannot give ourselves, and we're always ready for the battle. What we need to persevere, what we need to conquer in God's strength. And then it is enough. The power of prayer and fierce faith, 
terrific truth about what is really real and true and lasting and worth embracing and keeping, righteousness and right relations, a life-giving word, God's powerful spirit, the good news of peace and salvation and wholeness and healing for all of us and God's creation and even joy and fearlessness in the face of what seem to be insurmountable odds. Life is difficult. And fear can paralyze us. We can feel so weak in the face of the forces we face, both personal and cosmic. But thanks be to God, we are not alone Again and again and again, the mighty word of God comes to us in Scripture. Fear not. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Or in my translation, fear not. I've got your back. And the words are one of the first hymns I learned when I was knee-high to a duck. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems strong, God is the ruler. God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world. Fear and evil and hardship and pain and suffering will not have the last word. The word that spoke for light to shine out of darkness at the beginning will have the last word. In the words of a gospel song made famous during the civil rights struggle, I don't feel no ways tired. I've come too far from where I started. Nobody told me the road would be easy. But I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. We trust We believe that alongside any who stood strong, we trust and believe that. Alongside any who have stood strong in that word, or in days to come, will stand strong in that word. The girl who stands up to the bully, the patriot who stands up for democracy and freedom against tyranny and division, the grief-stricken parent who forgives their child's murderer, These are our people because they are God's people using every bit of equipment God gives. I think about another David. Another David, as a matter of fact, from Bethlehem, not Bethlehem Steel, not Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, but the Bethlehem in the occupied West Bank of Israel. Israel's occupied territory. His name is Daoud, which means David. Daoud's family has a 100-acre farm, just the right size for Winnie the Pooh. A 100-acre farm on a hilltop outside of Bethlehem. It is the last hilltop in that part of occupied West Bank that is not occupied by illegal Israeli settlers. They've had this property for 100 years. They've got the documents to prove from the Ottoman Empire, when the Ottoman Empire was a thing, that says this land belongs to the Nassar family. They've got everything you need. They ought to be able to register this pretty easily. But for 30 years, Daoud and his family have been tied up in court battle after court battle after court battle. The Israeli Supreme Court has said, this is their land, register them. And others have said, "Eh, not so fast. Why are you in such a hurry? For 30 years, they have struggled because they belong to the land. They belong to the land. In those 30 years, they have dealt with legal struggles. They have had their olive trees uprooted by illegal settlers who have come onto their land. Even now, illegal settlers have begun to build a road through their property. 
and they have put a trailer right next to the fence of their property in hopes that the next step will be the Israeli army saying, well, we need this for security purposes. Time and time and time again, they have been denied justice. And last year, masked men came onto their property and beat and stabbed Daoud and his brother so that they were hospitalized. They know what it is for life to be difficult. And yet, these Palestinian Christians, a family that maybe has been Christian since the first century, They attend Christmas Lutheran Church in Bethlehem and they have a sign on their property that in the midst of all this difficulty and hardship and suffering and injustice reads, we refuse to be enemies. They are committed to peace with justice. They are committed to the way of Jesus. They know what it is to suffer in ways I cannot imagine that are beyond comprehension and belief and yet they know that they are able to be strong not in their own strength but in the Lord and so they persevere and refuse to be enemies these are our people too because they are God's people using every bit of equipment God gives What they receive is offered to us as well when life brings us difficulty. And so at the end of the day, may we stand with Daoud and his family and all who know this mighty truth. May we, like them, stand alongside Desmond Tutu, who was only 5'1". He was a wee little guy. But he was a giant that Goliath himself would never be able to defeat. In the face of apartheid in the 1980s, when black folks were oppressed and imprisoned and tortured and killed, little Desmond Tutu said to the great and mighty white president of South Africa, you have already lost. Why don't you come and join the winning side? the side of justice and fairness for all. Because you see, little Desmond Tutu knew something that maybe that white president didn't know, and I'm still in the process of learning. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through him who loves us. Victory is ours. So says Desmond. So says Daoud. So says everyone who has been equipped to stand tall and in the end to stand. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, you didn't come here by yourself. Even if there was nobody else in the car, you came with other people in your heart. Right? People who are experiencing joy in their life. People for whom life is difficult is not just three words in a sermon, but it is real. Folks, for whom you pray, you might be the only person praying for somebody today, and that person rode in the car with you because they were nearer than breath. So I invite you in the next moments to simply, in the silence of your heart or aloud, to offer up those people, those joys, those concerns, your family, this church, this community, the Dauds of the world who suffer and mourn and wonder if anyone cares. Maybe you will be that person who cares for them today.
those who are experiencing great joy, those who are experiencing great grief, those in need of faith, and those who are being upheld by faith. I invite you to pray for those folks silently or aloud, and then we will end with the prayer that is always in season, the one that the Lord Jesus taught us. So will you bow your hearts and be bold and humble in the prayers you offer? Ukraine and Russia. Lebanon and Israel and Palestine. those hungry for God and don't know that that's what they're hungry for. for holiness of life. Oh God, you hear your children, even in the silence, you hear us. Our sighs too deep for words. Our hopes and dreams and visions that we pray are yours. Those whose lives are full of joy, those whose lives are full of sadness. And so we pray, keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this day. We pray for those who are in need of healing, that you might give rest to the weary, that you would bless the dying. That you would soothe the suffering. That you would pity the afflicted. That you would shield the joyous. Out of your great love. That we have seen and known in Christ Jesus. Who taught us when we pray to say. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. says I'm supposed to do the prayer and I always do what a pharmacist says. It's worked out well so far. So let us offer this prayer. Loving God, we bring these gifts before you as a sign of our trust and gratitude. We ask that you bless and multiply them for the work of your kingdom. Help us to use all we have to share your love and serve those in need. 
May our hearts be filled with joy as we give to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now hymn is number 580. Let's stand and sing together. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Why are you still here? It's over. Because the king is out there waiting for you to lead us in paths of righteousness, justice, and peace, and joy. And we do not need to be afraid because he goes before us and says, do not be afraid, for I am with you. In that hope, in that faith, in that confidence, shoo, go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and may God's mighty strength go with us all. Amen.